Hello and welcome back to Umis 301. So uh, let's carry on from where we left off. Now, um, if you are using Fuse and are following along, then everything I do should be exactly the same for you. However, if you've decided to use a different model or you're using your own, um, this is still going to be of use to you because a lot of what we're going to cover here will be exactly the same regardless of what the source of your model is. Okay. Um, Having said that, one of the first things I want to deal with is a little fuse issue. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to turn off my bones just so I can see my model more clearly. So I'm going to head over to the armature. Um, I'm going to go back into object mode. And in the armature options here, I'm just going to turn X-ray off. We'll be flicking backwards and forwards with that quite a lot, I should imagine. Um, one thing you may have noticed is our fuse model has lost some definition. And this is because the normal map is not coming through. Um, so let's fix that. Let's pick uh, one of the meshes. So we'll have the body. We will look at the textures. In fact, let me just give myself some more room here. Look at the textures. Um, okay, nothing in there. Let's actually pick our body material, then look at the textures. There we go. And you can see the normal map has actually been imported. Um, if we select it, and scroll down to the bottom of the properties you can see it is marked as a normal map as well however the power has been set to zero so I'm just going to quickly change that to one and that gives us all of that definition back which came from fuse so this is particularly nice brilliant so our model is looking a bit more like we want it to great so let's deal with one of the first things that happens with um, imported models regardless of where you come from and if you have been a long-term user of unity and you've tried making races and clothing before this is something you will have come across and that is the issue of scaling so uh, let's just click on our armature make sure we're in object mode and what you should see in the transform inspector over here is first of all we have um this rotation of 90 degrees which came from nowhere and we're also at a scale of 0 0.01 um, right so this is scaled down by 100 and it's a, a weird rotation this sort of thing will cause you all manner of nightmares so what we want to do is normalize this and get this back to where it should be before I do I just want to point something out um, if I head into uh, the body mesh and we have a look here, you can see this is all scaled to one and the rotations are all zeroed out, which is, that's where we want to be. So typically the first thing you do is you think, right, I'm going to apply, if you know Blender, we're going to apply our rotation and scale and that should fix this issue. Um, the problem you'll find with Fuse models and some other models as well, when you click Control A, and say apply the rotation and scale they suddenly leap out of position away from the zero point um, it defies all reason why on earth is that happening it took me a long time to work it out one thing that does happen is if I head into edit mode all of a sudden they jump back so there's something quite clearly being applied in object mode which is causing this to happen um, again I'm going to stay in object mode and what it is is a pause now um, if you imagine when we first create a model um, if we're in edit mode we have something called the bind pause okay um, in blender it's called the rest pause but the bind pause is where the mesh was positioned when the bones were first mapped to it okay what we can then do afterwards we can add bone movements and bone position changes which uh, we can pause our character however we like, but that bind pause is always recorded. What's happened here when we've applied our rotation and scale is the bind pause, which is ever so slightly different to our our current pause, has been scaled up by a hundred times. So the slight difference in position has been uh, amplified, if you like. Now all of this uh, is something we don't want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly eliminate that. Uh, it's very easy to do. If I head over into the armature itself, and you can see here we have in the skeletons our current pause position, which we're looking at. We can also look at the rest position or bind position. 
and you can see this is the correct original position. We can't work in this mode, this is just so you can see it. So I need to clear out whatever is in this pause position. Really easy to do, if I head over into pause mode, I say pause, and I'm going to say clear transform all. Now nothing happened. That's because even though I'm in pause mode, I haven't actually got any bones selected. So <sighs> let's hit A to clear our selection. A again, and that should have selected every single bone. Let's just put X-ray on just so we can see that. Yep, you can see the blue selection there. So A, clear selection, A, select all. Now I try that again, pause, clear transform, all. And that moves all of those possible adjustments and removes them from the pause. We are now in the exact same position as the rest position. You can see I can flick between the two, nothing moves. Fabulous. So make sure you've gone back to pause position and we can head back into object mode again. Great, so we have now cleared out this rotation, cleared out this scale, and removed that annoying pause that shifted our model into the wrong place. One more thing I want to do, because we've scaled our skeleton, what Blender has done to try and make sure nothing moves is the meshes that exist within it have now inherited that rotation and scale. You saw before they were zeroed out, and we had one as the scale, same with the eyes look. So again, let's just get rid of this by selecting the body, hitting control A and applying rotation and scale, and the same with the eyes. Okay, now we've done that, everything should be normalized. We've got normal scale and zero rotation for both meshes and for our armature itself. Superb. That one step, regardless of where your model came from, just clearing all of that out will solve you so many headaches before we even start thinking about turning this into an Uber. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking we've uh, corrected everything, we've uh, rescaled, everything's in order now. Um, if you save this, absolutely fine, everything will work great. As soon as you reload it, you will find that that horrible offset comes back again. And the reason is because we have that offset, that pause, stored in some animation frames here. So we need to clear this out as well. Uh, sorry, it's a bit of a pain, but let's do it. So if we go into pause mode again, make sure we've got everything selected. I'm going to go to my keyframing here and say location, rotation and scale. And clear that keyframe out and move to the next one and you can see that's where our old pose was and clear that keyframe out as well so there are now no keyframes whatsoever that are holding our pose in that bizarre position so again just to clear it pause clear transform all done now we are absolutely clean okay there is nothing moving that pose out of position no animation frames, no dodgy pauses. We're ready to go with the next step. Phew. So now we've dealt with all of that scaling shenanigans. Um, we are going to do one last thing, which Uma needs. Um, and that is any bone structure whatsoever can be turned into an Uma. Um, if it's vaguely humanoid, it will be picked up as a humanoid, just like anything else in Unity. Um, however, Uma needs two extra bones to actually connect to so uh, our root bone at the moment is this hip bone here which uh, yeah that's absolutely fine that's common for a lot of models but we need to add two extra bones before that one called global and one called position um, which Uma uses internally so first of all let's uh, have a quick look at our um, bone structure and as you can see here Mixamo has created this structure for us and it's it's highlighting that by prefixing every single bone with Mixamo rig and a colon. I don't like this, I like this to be a lot cleaner so you can feel free to go through this and remove that Mixamo rig at the front of every bone but what I'm going to use is a, a nice little tool which I've got over here called Simple Renaming Panel. Uh, this isn't part of Blender, but I'll leave a link to it uh, in the description. It's completely free and very, very useful. So I'm going to say I want to rename bones. Um, I'm going to say search for 
Mixamo rig colon and replace it with nothing. If I hit search and replace, it goes through every one of the bones and renames them. So if we have a look now, hips, spine, right leg, that's more like it. Wonderful, wonderful little tool. Okay, so now we've done that, let's add these extra bones. So I'm going to make sure I've got my armature selected. I'm going to head into edit mode and I'm going to say add single bone and yep we'll leave that there and we'll call this one global okay so double click up here global okay uh, now the way um, blender works is it takes the armature here as the root bone um, and this is always at zero 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 in space if we have a bone connected to that which we have here global and let's have a look at its properties if we have its head or its actual position at zero 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 it will be destroyed because effectively it's a duplicate of the armature position so what we need if we our first bone needs to have a different position so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a very slight offset in the Y direction almost unnoticeable just to make sure that this bone doesn't get destroyed by blender so I'm going to move the head position to 0 0.001 yep and I'm going to move the tail position to 0 0 0 so what we should see if we zoom in if I can zoom in that far in fact I can't because it's a thousand times too small but I've got a tiny little bone back there let's just change this just to prove um, it's not that s small there we are let's move that so I've changed that to point zero one instead so you can see a tiny tiny little bone just hiding away in there let's see if I can use that that's it let's see if I can use the other zoom to get a better view of it so we do have a bone sat there so next I want a second bone so I'm going to say add another single bone this one I'm going to call position now we've got the camera right inside it at the moment but don't panic about that so this one is going to start where the last one left off so this one can be at zero 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 and the tail of it I'm going to put to um, well what should we do we'll make it the reverse if we like okay so let's say that's zero and that's zero point zero one so we now have both of these bones pointing at each other okay so strange that we have to do that but we do now we need to connect all of this in the hierarchy so it all works correctly so the first thing I'm going to connect the position bone to the global bone so I'm going to say click on the position bone make sure I've got that selected then shift select the global bone I'm going to move into the screen hit control P and I'm going to say keep offset okay and what that does it stops the tailbone jumping to the head of the other you'll see if you accidentally press it it goes berserk so we now have our first part of the hierarchy global and position so now we want to connect the hips as a child of the position so I select hips then I shift select position into the screen control P and say keep offset and you'll see we get this dotted connection which connects our position bone to our hips that should be enough to keep us going okay we now have the correct structure okay so now if we were to export or use this model this should in theory before we do anything else this should be convertible into an UMA race from right where we stand now however I would like to move on in the next episode and add a little bit of modification to this character because at the moment um, he's fixed he doesn't have those lovely adjustments that our standard UMA model does so we're going to add some and have a play around with that so uh, hopefully you found that helpful and I will see you next time and once again I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible uh, if you would like to support me, feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.